Hello there, I'm Bobby in Blue, and on this channel we talk about all things tech. Today I want to talk to you about how you can time lapse longer with your GoPro. Today we're going to be talking about a time lapse solution for your GoPro from a company called Camdo. The system we're going to be looking at today is the Solar Up system. First, I want to say a huge thank you to Camdo for sending me this kit. Though no money has exchanged hands, they did send me this kit for this review. Though the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own, and they're based on the last five plus years that I've been using these systems, and about over a hundred deployments that I've put them out on. The Camdo time lapse systems have a lot of great features and there's a bunch of information I wanna cover. So I've split this video into a three-part series. In part one, we're gonna go over a general system overview and unboxing. In part two, we're gonna go over deploying the system, some great tips and tricks on how to use the system, and how to mount it in the different locations that you may need for your time-lapse. In part three, we'll cover CloudX, which is CamDo system that allows you to remotely retrieve images. We'll also go over maintaining and caring for the CamDo solar up system, as well as just managing your assets and some great tips and tricks on how to make the best time-lapse once you have your photos downloaded. So Camdo actually has two different kits. They offer a kit called the Power Up and they offer one called the Solar Up. The Solar Up is what I'll be going over today, but there's a lot of similarities between the two. The biggest difference is, is one draws its power from a solar panel and the other you would just plug in with the standard hard line to electricity. The Solar Up or Solar Power time lapse system comes with four major parts. First up is the uplink. This is Camdo's intervalometer. It tells the camera when to turn on to take a picture and when to turn off. This one is actually cloud connected as well, so it can download the images from your GoPro and then upload them to the Camdo Cloud X system. From there, you need something to keep everything warm and dry, and this is Camdo's housing. This reminds me a lot of just a tiny little Pelican case. It does have a couple of differences though too. It's got the mounting bracket on the back. It's got this port on the front that is covered by a camera filter, which is nice. You can unscrew that and screw it back on to clean the lens, as well as this port on the bottom, which allows the power to come from the solar panel into the battery pack. Next up is the solar panel and the battery pack. The solar panel just has a cord that comes out of the back of it here, and it plugs into the battery pack in the system. Next up is the mounting arm. This has got this articulating arm on it that's hand tightenable, as well as this ball head system here that can be rotated. So you can really turn and mount the camera in pretty much any direction or way that you'd like. Okay, so let's get into how to put this thing together. First up is the housing itself. Pretty much everything is gonna center around this housing. On the front of it, you have this camera filter. This is a standard 67 millimeter camera lens filter, but it's clear. The reason why I like this is because it allows the camera to see out, but it also allows me to quickly remove it and clean it if needed. A tip that I really like to use on this filter is Rain-X. The same kind of stuff you would put on your windshield. I like to spray it on here and it helps the water bead off of the glass so that it doesn't leave any residue on your lens. So you'll notice inside when we open this up, there's a couple of things going on. This front piece, there's a bracket right here that allows you to put the camera in there. It has a little arm that you can put in or take out depending on what GoPro model that you have so it's compatible with many models. And then on the back here you'll see there's some Velcro and there's also some Velcro on the back of this battery and the back Velcro piece here just holds the battery to that back wall and it just really helps manage the cables in the system to just help keep everything out of the way. So before we put this all into the housing I kind of want to lay everything out on the table here and show you exactly how all these things connect. First up let's talk about the different ports on the intervalometer. There's one that's labeled camera. This is the cord that goes out from the uplink to the camera. This is labeled power. This is where power comes into the system. For the camera cable, many of the kits that I've had actually have come with two cables that look like this. And you can put these together. This is USB-A in the center and then USB-C on either side. They also have this directionality. Some of them are labeled with a little USB sign. This one happens to be labeled with some white dots on it. And the white dots that are on these cables or the little USB emblem, they need to be facing up. That's crucial for the system to work. I'm gonna plug the first one into the side here where it says camera. And I'm gonna plug the second one into the camera itself. And I'm just gonna make sure that both of those white dots are plugged in and facing up. Next up is the power cable itself. This is gonna come out of the battery pack. The battery pack has a couple of ports on it that you should be aware of. This is a USB micro port on the side. The USB micro port is for charging it. To get power out of the battery pack, you will plug it into these USB-A ports here. The way the system works is you need to work with a battery pack that has an always on mode. In this case, this is the V50 version of the battery. You don't have to put it into any special mode, it just is always in, always on mode. So that's something to keep in mind with this one. Some of their other battery packs, you have to click and then press and hold in the button, 
and it will put it into an always on mode. So if you happen to be working with a different version of the battery than this, make sure you follow up with the steps on how to put it in always on mode. So the battery pack is gonna plug into the power port on the side of the uplink and it just goes in, it's a USB micro port and it just goes in like this. So it's just a general cable overview. The power comes from the red cable here from the solar panel. It goes from a barrel plug into the USB micro adapter here. This goes into the side of the battery pack like so. USB A to USB micro comes out of the battery pack into the uplink, into the power port on the uplink. From there, we have the camera port on the uplink and it goes via USB C cable over to the GoPro itself. And then from the camera port through the USB C cable to the camera. And that's the general overview of the way that the cords all work. So let's put this into the housing and see how it all goes in. I'm gonna start by quickly unplugging these things just because it's easier to get everything in its right place when it's unplugged. So the housing pops open like this. I'm gonna put the camera in first and the camera itself just goes right in like this. This has a Velcro strap to hold the camera in its place. I always like to put that strap into the housing so that the soft side of the Velcro is facing towards the camera screen. I'm not sure if the scratchy part of the Velcro actually could hurt the screen, but it's just something I always like to do to make sure I take care of my camera the best that I can. So it just straps in the front here, just like this. The strap holds it on its side and the camera lens goes right into that camera porthole. And you can see on the other side here that the GoPro's camera lens is sticking through this filter area here. Next up is the battery pack. I'm gonna put the battery pack here on its side. I like to put mine kind of right here on the side. That allows me enough room to still plug it into the power from the solar panel and just kind of route my cords everywhere. From there, I'm gonna remove the tip from this barrel plug that comes with the solar panel. The reason why I'm doing that is so I can pass it through the housing through the port on the bottom. And here's that port on the bottom here. It just unscrews like this. And then you put the cap onto the cable like so. And then you put the cable through the port and then you'll just screw down that cap. And that allows it to try and keep that port as weather tight as possible. Um, you still have the system facing down like this so that most water wouldn't be able to get in there anyway. From there, I like to put the adapter onto the barrel plug and just plug it in so like this. And it's a little bit tight to pop in there, but just push. You'll notice there's an area that kind of pops over top of the barrel plug, and that way you know it's nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna route this inside here. I like to remove my battery pack to be able to do that plug it in the USB micro port on the side and just kind of work with my cabling to get this into a good spot. While you're doing this, I would recommend that you keep this side where the USB A ports that you'll plug your intervalometer into in a minute have enough room to take the plug from the USB A into the battery pack. All right, from there, I'm gonna run power with this red cable. This is USB A. Either of the USB A ports on the battery pack are just fine to work with. Next up is the uplink, the USB micro from here into the side of the uplink into the port that says power. From there, I'm gonna take my camera cable and plug it in one end from the intervalometer in the camera port, making sure that I have that white dot or USB symbol facing up, and then the other end into the camera. Something to take note of on your GoPro is I took the battery door off the GoPro and I also removed the battery. Both of those things are crucial for this system to work right. So I have got my initial layout where everything goes and I've got it all connected now. So I'm gonna put this in and just kind of find a place where the cables can go, where everything is secure, but it's also like a good cable pathway so that this case can actually close. And this seems like a good configuration. I've got slack in each of the cables. Nothing seems to be bending or breaking on the cable. Everything seems to have added room and then I like to just test whether this can open and close without cables getting in the way and just really make sure that I have everything in a good spot from there I'm gonna push the buttons on the side and just make sure that this can clamp down and everything's good from there so I'm gonna close this case up and from here we're gonna get the case ready to put the mounting bracket on it as well as the solar panel this is the mounting bracket here this is the side that you would either screw or wire tie or clamp to whatever it is you're mounting it to it's got an articulating arm here that allows you to twist it back and forth as well as this ball head that allows you to really pretty much mount the camera in any direction that you'd like. The way that we connect this to this is with this little ball head system. So let's put that on next. I'm gonna flip this over here so that you can see the back. There are three screw holes here and think about it in two sets of two. So this set right here and this set right here. And this is what we're gonna attach to those. It's this little ball head and you use the two screw ports that are the furthest away from each other. So in this case, it would be something like this or something like this. So far with each of the systems that I've used, I prefer this top mounting area, but really you could try either depending on what works best for you. Something I wanna note here is it's never super comfortable when you have parts that are extra or left over. But in this case, all the kits that I've ever had from Camdo come with the nuts that go with these bolts or screws here. You don't use the nuts for whatever reason, that's just how they're packaged, they come together. As far as I know, they are extra. They simply just happen to come in a set with the screws themselves. So you'll just take your screwdriver and place these in. 
This is nice and easy. Make sure that it's extra tight, but not anything crazy. So now that I've got the ball head installed on the back of the housing, this is what we will use to mount to the arm itself. And it connects via this ball head port. So this just power pops on like this, and then you're gonna hand tighten this down. This ball head system is actually really great because it allows you to kind of articulate the camera however you'd like. As you can see, I can move it around almost in any direction and then mount the camera. Something to keep in mind is while you're working with this, it's crucial that you don't ruin your cabling. So while I'm working with this, I try to avoid setting this camera housing down on this side here that has my power cable from my solar panel into the battery pack. So just really make sure that you take care of that. You're not bending it or breaking the cable, just really take care of your cables. Next up, we're gonna go over how to mount the solar panel to the housing itself. And it's a very similar system to the mounting arm. I'm gonna use this ball head screwed into the top of the housing here. There's actually two ports on the top of the housing here, and both of them are good options for this. Sometimes I've seen this solar up kit with two solar panels on the top of it, so I think there's one for each. In this case, we're gonna be using a single solar panel. So I'll take this ball head here and screw it into the top of the camera house. And I've always just hand tightened this. It's pretty easy to get it pretty snug on there. And then very similar to the mounting arm, I have this ball head housing here that one goes on either side. There's a ball head on the solar panel itself. There's a ball head on the top of the camera house. So first I'm gonna attach this top to the camera housing just like this. And then I'm gonna get the solar panel ready to go on as well. And I'll just pop in this ball head just like this. And then you can see here, this can really move and articulate in all sorts of different directions. And then just like before, it has this kind of bracket that hand tightens down to kind of stop the articulating so that your panel will stay in the same place. So what I like to do with this is use my panel to kind of cover my camera housing. So that way, if any rain comes or moisture, the water kind of drips over the housing versus directly on it. That's not always possible based on what direction you need to face the panel to get optimal sunlight. But I'm just gonna set this one up as if I could do it forward facing with the camera lens. So I'm just gonna pull it forward like so. I'm gonna kind of mount this at like a 40, 45 degree-ish angle. And this isn't gonna be perfect, but you'll get the general idea. So as you can see, if rain were to come on the front here, it would kind of drip over the housing itself versus directly onto the camera housing or its lens. So I like this idea, but truly it's based on the direction that your solar panel needs to be to get optimal sun production. I live in Utah and the general idea here is, is that it can face east or west or even south, but really never north. So I'll pull my compass out on my phone and make sure I know exactly what direction my solar panel is facing to make sure I get the optimal production on the solar panel. And there's a bunch of tools on the internet that you can use to see which direction is the best for solar production. So there you have it. There's your general unboxing and overview of how you set up the Camdu Solar Up Kit. If you've been looking for a way to time lapse longer with your GoPro, this is one of the best options that I've found. I made a video about this kit before in the past, and I've had a chance to email and text and chat with people all over the world who have used this system to time lapse longer with their GoPro. Make sure to check out part two and three of this video. We'll go through each of the steps through deploying the system and then managing the system while it finishes your time lapse, as well as some great tips and tricks to get the most out of your time lapse. I'm Bobby in Blue. If you got anything out of this video, definitely drop a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future where we go over how you can get the most out of your tech, definitely subscribe below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.